Good evening all, and welcome. Have you ever gone to a house that has given you an uncomfortable feeling? Something that you can't explain away? Well, you wouldn't be the only one. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for cool behind the scenes stuff. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. For context, my grandparents got this big suburban house in the 80s for a really low price and decided to build a pool on the second floor to it and whatnot. When I say the house was big, I mean it was big. A large basement with wine cellar, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, an office, two living rooms, huge kitchen slash dining room and a pool house slash bar on the first floor five bedrooms, three bathrooms, a balcony terrace, and a living slash dining room on the second floor. My family moved in when the construction was still going on, and weird ass things started to happen. Like a drill going max power being unplugged, or things disappearing and appearing again in strange and odd places. But my family would always joke about the house being haunted, and never really did anything about it. At some point, it got pretty insane and my grandpa took a bottle of holy water, and that was it. Ever since I remember, I've had this strange, uneasy feeling about the house, and particularly about some rooms within it, like I was never alone and was being watched, but I always brushed it off, thinking that I was just being a silly girl. At some point, I got to completely avoid going into these places. I was maybe three or four when I had this dream, I was playing at the bottom of the stairs and some shadowy figures started growing from the floor. I remember I was just watching it slowly materialize itself in front of me, until it looked like a man with a hat and evil eyes, all black. A few years ago researching over the web, I realized it was a shadow man. He had his hand stretched over towards me and was about to say something when I woke up, shaken and scared to death. I sometimes saw this figure standing on the hallway, so I avoided going there by myself as much as I could. When I was seven, I moved to the room besides the stairs on the second floor. This is one of the rooms that made me feel uneasy. I would always find my stuff misplaced around my room, and my lamps and radio unplugged, but I didn't really pay attention to it. Staying in this room, my nightmares and creepy dreams intensified. I remember clearly waking up starving pretty early on a Sunday morning, and when I tried to get up, I fell into a void and woke up really scared. When I finally stopped shaking, I tried to get up again just to end up going into the void once more. This went on five times, and I was so scared that I eventually stopped trying to get up until my mum went to wake me up a few hours later. Another time, I was sitting in the kitchen with my grandma late one night. Everyone else was asleep, and we were chatting about life when she sewed some pillows for the sofa. When she was done, she piled the pillows over a counter where there were four of them, and made some tea for us to keep talking. We were laughing and everything, when all of a sudden the pillows flew across the kitchen, as if they were angrily tossed and crushed at the laundry room door which was above the basement. Another room that freaked me out. When I was 11 years old, and it was about 11 p.m. on a school night, I turned off all the lights and went to bed. Just a few minutes passed, so there wasn't a real chance that I was dreaming when I heard a rhythmic tapping on my window. It was soft at first, and then a bit louder. Keep in mind, this was upstairs. I slowly turned around to the window and through the curtains I saw this rather tall and lean humanoid figure, with a long, thin head, and a three-fingered hand tapping on my window. I screamed at the top of my lungs and ran to my mum's bedroom. I remember she checked my room and everything was normal, so my grandpa and uncle checked the whole yard and found nothing. I obviously didn't sleep that night and stayed in my mum's room for at least a week. After that episode, I switched bedrooms. My new room had a walk-in closet where my grandma kept the towels, sheets, and some really old stuff that we never used, so its door was mainly closed. 
The door had a latch on the outside that was impossible to open from the inside of the closet. One afternoon when I was about 14, I was heading home alone, playing video games after school when I heard this loud bang coming from the closet. I immediately froze and looked at the door. Then it started to sound as if someone was desperately trying to take down the door. So I noped my way downstairs and waited for my mum. One afternoon when I was 15, I came back from school starving, as only a teen would. So I went directly to the kitchen. As far as I knew, I was alone. When I was almost done fixing myself a sandwich, I hear a loud bang upstairs and almost immediately heard my mum scream in absolute terror. So I obviously ran upstairs to check on her. We caught each other on the stairs. She was pale as ever and shaking. So I took her down to calm her down. As soon as she could speak to me again, she said she was watching TV in her room when she heard the same noise I heard. She startled and looked at the window and saw the shadow man floating outside her window. Hence her scream and the running downstairs. We ended up leaving that house about 17 years ago. I still remember a couple nightmares I had back then regarding the house. And even now, sometimes in my dreams, I still feel that house and those feelings return. It creeps me out. My parents bought their first house back in 1972. It was a fixer upper, but they decided to move in right away and fix things when time and money permitted. Within a few days of moving there, the new neighbors came over to introduce themselves. They also let my parents know that the previous owners had moved out after a nasty divorce. They had lost their second child to SIDS and their relationship went downhill from there. My parents were horrified, more so because they were newly pregnant and couldn't imagine going through such a thing. They eventually pretty much forgot all about it. Life went on and they were in love with their new life and their new house. In preparation for the baby, they decided to wallpaper the nursery. Now my dad told my mum there was no need in wallpapering the inside of the closet, but she insisted. She was kneeling down, scraping off old paint inside the closet when her eyes fell upon something that made her blood turn to ice. Written in crayon, about the eye level for a kindergartner in childish scrawl was written, I killed the baby. It has long been rumored that the house next to me has been haunted. People would come and go like it was a perpetual revolving door. The longest anyone stayed was about six months. It was a normal house, upper middle class, tan with a white picket fence, a good sized deck and a decent yard. The only thing slightly creepy about this house was that a man who had owned the house for years and moved had buried all of his dead pets in the backyard. So it was an animal graveyard of sorts. It sat empty for quite some time. And this is where my experience begins. I was in high school when it happened, probably my freshman year. I had gotten together with two friends, Carol and Erin, and we were trying to figure out what to do to keep from being bored. Someone, maybe it was me, decided to go check the house out and see what all the fuss was about. We walked through the open gate and into the backyard. A cable man had recently come by to do some work, which was very odd since no one lived there. After standing in the yard for a minute, we decided to play hide and seek. We opted to draw the boundary line at the front yard and backyard. Going inside was off limits. I would count and they would hide. Well, I found Carol almost immediately and she decided to help me find Aaron. We looked for a few minutes or so when we heard a noise that sounded like movement in the house, kind of like someone scurrying across the floor. We assumed that our friend had broken the rules and gone inside. Erin, we shouted at the house, you know inside's off limits. We expected to hear the door open and Erin come walking out, talking about how she just wanted to look. When we hear her come out the bushes behind us, explaining that it wasn't her in the house. We get a look of horror on our faces and slowly turn to look at the large window that overlooks the yard. 
The house is pitch black, so it's impossible to see inside. We aren't looking for very long, when I see something directly in front of the window. It was a young girl, maybe 11 or 12. The only thing that was out of place was that she wasn't from this time period. She was wearing a dark dress with a high color and two braids down her back. She looked sad and mouthed something that I understand to be help me. I can't figure out what she means when I see something behind her that made my blood run cold. It's a man about six foot five feet tall and sinister. He had a look of pure hatred on his face and his hands reach out as if to take the girl standing in front of him. As fast as he appears, they vanish. I come back to reality and turn to look at my friends. They looked like they'd seen a ghost. I turn to my friend Erin and ask what she saw. She describes the little girl exactly and saw the man as well. We hightailed it out of there as fast as we could and have never been back. Last night I was in my kitchen alone and just making myself something to eat around 3 a.m. or so and I can feel something near or around me. While making myself a drink, I can see some sort of dark shadow quickly disappear around the wall, which has a little mirror cabinet in the corner, so I can see right around the wall, and of course, there's nothing there. At this point, I can feel something tug at my shirt collar, and the hair on my neck stands up on edge. So I quickly finish making what I had meant to and get back to my room ASAP. I know for a fact that I'm the only person awake as my sisters are asleep and my brother is out. My mum's at work and my dad is asleep in his room. So any noises I heard outside were definitely not them. I've read a lot of stories and at the time thought it might be my mind playing tricks on me. But at this point I know that something is causing me to feel uneasy about the kitchen or at least that part of the house alone. So after a few minutes, I went to put my plate away and basically received confirmation that there is something here. I have a weird paranoia about stuff, so I always check to see if my balcony door is closed and locked, and there is no excess stuff plugged into outlets. That the fan light in the living room is off, the only time I leave it on is when I'm not going to sleep or during the day, and that the sink isn't on in any way and that the stove dials are all off. I turn them slowly to make sure they are in the off position, then last I check to see if all the bolts and locks on the main door are locked. Just before I went into my room with the plate, I did all five and went to eat. After I came out, I felt that same feeling again and quickly washed my plate and glass, but then I saw what confirmed it all. In the living room, we have this little cabinet with boxes in it. The time it was filled, and the time it was put there was the only time it's been moved. This has not been moved at all since we put it in that spot. But as I walked back to my room, I turned around and saw that it was sitting about a foot forward from the wall. Now, had anyone moved it forward to grab something that might have fallen behind it, they would have had to have put it back right away because my mom would get angry. To be honest, now that I think about it, you can't really drop anything behind the cabinet to begin with, as the entire cabinet is squared off and everything would be contained inside. But as I'm moving back, I looked around to see if anyone was awake, but nope. I turned around to go through my five steps again. And the first thing I notice is that the balcony door is open slightly with the latch. It's a little lever that when it's in the upward position, it will be unlocked and then it swings downwards towards the side and points down, which is when it locks itself. It is in the halfway point directly 90 degrees pointing to the side. I've never seen anyone in the house doing this as it would get in the way of opening the door itself due to the latch being in the way of the handle. This confirmed that something is there, but not an intruder. We are about 20 stories up because I checked everything in the house and nothing, not even in the smallest places to hide. But something even more creepy happened the next morning. I had decided to go check the mail downstairs and got ready. As I stepped outside, the light right above my head started to flicker. I know cheesy as hell, but I still got that uneasy feeling so I knew it might not just be the bulb, which 
By the way, wouldn't a bulb just go dimmer and then stop working rather than flicker? And my little attentiveness above me, I always look around and walk down the hall when I notice that the stairwell door was fully shut. The apartment in front of mine and all the others along the hallway were also fully shut. I thought, now this is the perfect time to get a video of all of this. So I turned around and then started to record. There's no wind in the hallway, no doors that need to be closed as it's on the other floors and you can't hear what's going on on the other floors either. These doors are pretty heavy, so no gust of wind or anything will slam them. It's 30 degrees C, humid, no wind at all unless you were outside. So after I got the mail, I started walking back down the hallway from the elevator only to be met with the lights working perfectly. I had been gone for three minutes or less as I had a three minute song playing and it barely finished by the time I came back up. No repairman is that good that he can figure out the light is out, get his ass up there with a ladder, take out the glass around the bulb, replace it, take the old bulb and ladder away in the elevator which I was just in within three minutes. In the summer of 2015, my husband and I were house sitting for these rich people in between our big move to the mainland as we're from Hawaii and some really crazy creepy stuff started happening just a few days in. The first weird thing that happened was when we got there, I couldn't find how to get the motion sensor light in the entry garage hallway to turn off. We thought nothing of it. A few days later, I was watching TV and you can see the front door from the living room and I saw a shadowy man walk by the front door. I wasn't particularly freaked out because unfortunately shadow people are frequent visitors of mine. I think it must have been a Hawaii thing because everyone has seen them there. I think it must have been that same evening that I hadn't seen my husband for several minutes. So I called out to him and saw that front motion detector light flip on again right at that moment. So I walked out to it and heard him go, what? From the backyard, not the front yard. I quickly walked to the backyard through the house and staring back towards the front yard, I saw an orb zoom out the house and into the yard. A side note on orbs. I've watched those paranormal shows on Discovery Channel, but never thought they were real until I actually saw them. Anyway, fast forward a few days, a different motion detecting light started going crazy one night, flipping on and off and varying intervals. At this point, my husband, who you might call the rational one, is totally freaked out. I, however, felt extremely curious and wanted to investigate, which is so weird for me because I'm a total scaredy cat. I even make my husband walk me to the bathroom in the middle of the night because I'm too scared to go by myself. But I just felt compelled to go towards the garage upstairs area, and there's an apartment above the garage, and figure out what's going on. We got a flashlight and shined it into the garage and apartment windows and we couldn't help feeling this very, very weird dread and fear emanating from it. Even though I was curious, I also felt it in the pit of my stomach, like some overwhelming depression or evil. We called it quits, I locked the doors and we went to bed after that. There were several other things that we encountered while we were staying there. One evening I heard someone say, ding dong, Kind of like how someone would say when they get to a friend's house to inform them of their presence. After which the dogs, as we were also dog sitting, went nuts barking at the front door. Although there was no one there. One night when we were walking into the bedroom, something brushed up against my arm. And when I turned, I saw a person walking the other way down the hallway, turning a corner. Myself and one of the dogs saw an orb fly out of a room we were in. The dog definitely saw it too and he looked freaked out. One morning while showering, I dropped my razor on the ground, and when I bent down to pick it up, it was on the countertop across the bathroom. One morning, my husband dropped his toothbrush and he couldn't find it for an hour, and then it reappeared on the countertop. I've had a lot of ghostly paranormal encounters in my life, but this last summer just puts it over the top. At one point, I was in tears asking my husband why I'm so perceptive, and why these things keep happening to me. As of today, I'm a 28 year old female, but growing up, I was a very sensitive little boy. My parents adopted me as a baby and I never met my birth family until 2012. 
It was then I learned that every woman in my birth family were all quite sensitive to the paranormal. Nobody in my adoptive family had any sort of sensitivity, but they all did things subconsciously. When I was nine, my family moved to a very nice house in St. Helena, Napa, overlooking the valley. It was a beautiful two-story house, but in a weird way since it was on a hill. From the road, the second story was the first, but from the backyard down the mountain, both floors were visible. I believed it was called a sloped lot. Upstairs with a garage linked to the main house by a breezeway leading to the laundry room. To the right was the study, and straight ahead was a living room and a kitchen. The hallway ran parallel to the kitchen, meeting at a family slash dining room, where the front door sat, though none of us actually used it. Right next to that were the stairs, all the dreaded stairs, leading down to one long hallway connecting the bedrooms. The experiences began happening immediately after we moved in. Part of me believes it was drawn to the negative trauma I suffered at the hands of my abusive father, who focused his rage mostly on me. And that's why I was targeted out of my brothers. But that's just a theory. The first of my many experiences was when the whole family was at my middle school for a scholastic book fair. I remember having a sudden twisting in my gut when my parents got a call that our backyard was on fire. To this day, nobody knows how it happened. It just started. Then the real fun began. It started out slowly and only ever happened downstairs. My brothers and I would wake up and see a man walking back and forth on the patio, glancing through the French doors of our bedrooms as he passed. We never felt malice from him, and we all recalled seeing him. What makes that particular bit interesting is that from a child's perspective, usually the male entity would be malicious, while the female entity could be a protector. In my house, it was the polar opposite. Myself and my brothers felt a dark presence lurking downstairs in the hallway that would affect all three of us to the point where we would take the stairs two or three at a time as fast as possible. I would have a recurring nightmare about struggling to get to the top of the stairs when something caught behind me. In one particular dream, I was reaching for the top stair and the entity caught me and strapped my mouth shut so I couldn't scream. Keep in mind, I was too young for these things to naturally come to me. In the beginning, the door to my bedroom would slam in the wee hours of the morning. So loudly, it would wake my father. He insisted it was a draft, even though no one else's doors would do it. And again, it slammed with a massive force. We had to put a 10 pound bookend in front of it. Not much later, the entity in the hall would probe our bedrooms to see who was the most sensitive. My older brother, who slept at the end of the hall, nearest the darkness, outgrew his empathetic sensitivity. And my younger brother eventually stopped as well. But I remained more sensitive than ever, and I knew it. And that's when I met her. When the entity first introduced itself, I felt like it was kind of a protector, like the man from the balcony. But I knew that it wasn't true. She would stand at the far end of the hallway and wait. Not that she was actually there, there was no one there, but it was more of a feeling of perpetual dread. It wasn't darkness or blackness, but more that it physically sucked the light in around it like a dark hole. She would come to me in dreams as various entities, but the man would always show up and protect me. Mind you, I neither knew her nor the man, and the fact that the house was built on an inactive volcano littered with limestone and obsidian probably boosted the energy or what have you. For about seven years, I would wake up promptly at 3 a.m. sweating bullets, hearing someone running back and forth in the hallway, panting as they passed my room, repeatedly until around 5 a.m. when it began to get light. The first face-to-face -face incident with this creature was when I woke up at scheduled at 3 a.m. like clockwork and heard the panting and pacing in the hallway. After about 20 minutes, I got too scared to sit there and do nothing and reached to the dresser by my bed and turned on the light. The panting and pacing stopped, 
and I waited about 10 seconds of soul-crippling silence before it happened. Long, gnarly, shadowy fingers slowly gripped the doorframe one by one. I heard the wood of the frame creak slightly as the wispy fingers pulled into the bedroom. Before my brain could process what I was seeing, I heard her gasp, like an audible gasp. The fingers retreated in pain, and I sat in silence until the sun came up two hours later. That was the first time I realized I had a weapon against this thing. I still don't fully understand it, but she couldn't exist in light. While that alone brought tears to my eyes recalling it, there was one other experience that haunts me to this day. Plenty of years had gone by now, and I had turned 14. My father was a prominent doctor in the area, and he was planning on taking my mother to a fancy hospital gala the same night my little brother had a sleepover at a friend's house, and my older brother was out college shopping in some other county. It was the first time I had the house to myself at night. I begged them to reschedule or hired me a babysitter. They told me I was old enough to be a babysitter, and that I needed to grow up. Everyone in my family, them included, experienced weird happenings, but they all preferred to turn a blind eye. So my pleas fell on deaf ears, and I was left alone. I spent the first half of the evening upstairs where it was safe, occasionally glancing towards the staircase for any activity from the living room while the TV distracted me. About 10 or 11 p.m., I remember thinking that I was too old to be scared to be by myself, and I could sleep downstairs alone if I wanted to. I kept the lights on upstairs, and slowly descended the staircase, feeling the darkness getting closer with every step. When I reached the last step, I leaped to the light switch and hit it, illuminating the hallway, shaking violently. I hurried to my bedroom. Through the eerie quiet, my footsteps on the carpet were the only sound to break the silence. I finally slunk into my bedroom, and quickly turned on the dresser light, jumping into bed as I stared into the lights shining through the downstairs. Going over in my head that all the doors were locked, all the windows were closed, and that as long as these lights were on I was safe, the lassitude of Morpheus overcame me, and my mind began to wander into the fields of Nod. Unlike the usual times I woke up at night, this time was slightly different. I woke up suddenly completely alert, with the fight or flight response already kicking in. I was facing the wall, but was absolutely terrified. I felt like if I moved or even breathed too loudly, it would spell immediate death. I sat there for what felt like an eternity, but was most likely only a few minutes, before I mustered up the courage to roll over. When I did, my heart sunk. All the lights in the house were off, and a womanly shadow was standing in the doorway, and thought that maybe my mother had popped her head in, before I realised she was with my father at the gala, all night, and they were staying in a hotel until morning. I just sat there frozen, locked in gaze with this creature, who finally made it through the threshold of my door frame and into my room a feat she had yet to accomplish. I closed my eyes and repeated in my head that it isn't real. It isn't real. I was trying to control my breathing as I shake and shiver violently, and I decide to peek and see if she's still there. Surely she can't come in further. I open my eyes. It's standing right over me, at the edge of my bed looking down at me. Not with its eyes. It didn't have eyes. What it did have was a large, toothy grin amidst the wispy shadows of its body. I dared not scream and even move, but hold the gaze as I heard a deep rumble emanating from the swirling torrent of darkness that was this creature. Having grown up terribly abused, I knew fear, but this was something else. I had never been this afraid before in my life. It was no longer creaks or shadows darting in the corner of your eye. It was face to face with me. Something else. Something not of this world. And it wanted me. I knew in this moment, as if its mouth began to expand, that if I did nothing I would die. So I did the only thing I could think of in that moment. My body suddenly lurched upwards from the bed towards the entity, and I screamed at it. 
Not a scream of fear, but more like a war cry. Like it could try to kill me, but I wasn't planning on making it easy. My face almost went through it, as it lurched up before it recoiled and let out an unearthly wail. As it heard my cry, it left the room. Within moments, all the lights in the house were back on, and I just sat there, shivering in shock, until the dam broke and I began to cry. I just cradled my pillow and rocked back and forth on the bed, sobbing until the sun came up and my parents returned home. My family, devout Catholic doctors, were already skeptical of these things and didn't believe me, attempting to convince me it was a night terror or perhaps sleep paralysis. Only, I could move. I could think. I wasn't stuck. And it actually happened. I know I didn't dream it because I stayed awake until the next day. I don't expect anyone to believe me. But this was just the kind of thing that happened in this house. I believe it was limited to that specific location because it didn't follow me to college or anywhere else beyond. I fear for those who moved in when my parents sold it, but it would be cool to get in touch with who lives there and ask if they've experienced similar things. And we did have trouble selling it. It was on the market for years. Anytime someone would come to view it, they would get creeped out and leave. Anyway, that's my story. I personally don't believe in demons or anything gaudy, but I'll respect you if you do. If you have any theories on what it could have been, feel free to comment. My dad passed away in a motorcycle accident about 10 years ago. And after he passed, weird stuff started happening at the dorm when I got back. The clock would fall off the wall and change time. Batteries would separate themselves from remotes and bangs and knocks were regular. But the weirdest thing that would happen was when I was coming home from college and took a shower, got dressed and headed back into the bathroom to finish getting ready. And the mirror was just clearing the steam off and lo and behold, I see smear marks faintly that looked like letters. So I tip the mirror because it's one of those triple pane medicine cabinet mirrors and I see Hey, spelled out in his handwriting with the elven eye symbol from Lord of the Rings that my dad would put everywhere. This was probably six months plus after he passed and I have no idea where it came from since it was only me and my mum in the house and I knew she wouldn't do that. The crazy part is like a week before that I had broke open a glow stick and splashed it on the mirror, but the writing was under the splashes and none were smeared or touched. Still to this day, I can't explain how that happened. We actually took the entire mirror off the wall so it wasn't ruined. I was still living at my dad's house when I was 17. It started the day we visited the house. I just got chills thinking about it. We were doing a house tour with the property seller from a company where my dad told me, this is going to be your room. As soon as I entered, I knew I would never sleep there. I had that weird feeling like, no way am I going to sleep there. Finally, my dad bought the house. The first night I slept in that particular room, and I actually hadn't been able to sleep. I wasn't believing in ghosts, not sure if I still do, but there was something about this room I just wasn't able to explain, like a very strong bad feeling. I'm not someone who's ever been scared by this kind of stuff. The day after I told my dad I would never sleep in that room again, and he saw I was dead serious. He knew I wasn't the kind of guy to care about this stuff, but actually, I did at the time. So he decided to build me a new room in this huge basement, like new walls and stuff. The room didn't even exist before we built it. A week or two went by, and then I started to hear voices in my imagination. It was just so strange. Then I started to hear an unmistakable knocking, softly on the walls for no reason, and doors that I knew were closed would open when I went to the bathroom at night. I told my dad and he started to make fun of me by opening doors and knocking on the basement door, saying it wasn't him. My best friend came over, and he felt something strange too and didn't want to come back to sleep even after when he was drunk. He was telling me things like, no way am I sleeping in that basement again. After a month or so, I started getting sleep paralysis on a weekly basis. Scared the hell out of me. 
Never saw anything more than my empty room, though. Actually, I never saw anything. Always strange feelings and doors that had been opened, and creepy voices in my head. I was a serious hockey player with no drugs or mental problems. And one day I was at my girlfriend's house and was talking to her about it. Her mum heard some of what I was saying and came immediately. She was some kind of medium and stuff. She listened to me and told me she would come and see what was going on. It's after that discussion, I started really getting scared because I was more convinced there was a physical reasoning behind it all. She came and I'll always remember the look she gave me. She immediately got out and told me there's one guy who's not happy and he carries a very heavy weight on his foot and there's another guy who only wants to make jokes. I'll take care of that. She also told me some of the things that were happening in the house without me having told it to anyone. And from that moment on, nothing ever happened again. I asked her what she did and she explained that she went to my bedroom, made them come to her and then took them away from the house. I know it's weird, but the fact that nothing ever happened again creeps me out too. I'd like to add to the fact that I did some research afterwards. There was only one owner before my dad, and he confirmed that he built the house and nothing tragic ever happened there. I would also like to add that I'm French. So, you know. Like, from the moment she left the house and did her thing, nothing ever happened again. No sleep paralysis, no voice, no doors, no shaking, no knocking, no nothing. It still creeps me out just thinking about it. The house I lived in was haunted. Best I give you some history. I was a kid when I first moved in and lived there for over 15 years. I moved out for reasons unrelated to anything. My mum bought this house from the original owners who had built it. The original owners had one daughter who worked for a famous politician. She met an unfortunate end that people find shady. The parents moved somewhere else after losing their only child and eventually had the house I lived in built. Not sure how long they lived there, but we bought it and they moved into a nursing home. Soon after I moved in, I would hear what sounded like a little girl saying, Hey! exactly like someone just trying to get someone's attention. I would be in my bedroom, and it sounded like it was coming from the front door. I go to the front door and no one was ever there. This was also in the middle of the day. The only children I remember wouldn't have been babies, or not even been born yet when this happened. It happened repeatedly a few times a day on and off. My family is Buddhist, and we got a family friend to set up some shrines to protect us. The haze stopped, and all was well for a while. We never stopped having those shrines, and they're still there despite more things eventually happening. My house is oddly long. Family room slash basement door is on one side of the house, followed by the kitchen, living room, and then bedroom areas. Only my mum and I lived there for quite a time. One day I was home alone and heard the distinct sound of someone going up the stairs. The door to come up, opening and closing and footsteps walking towards the bedroom. I was in my bedroom, which is the first one after that stretch of the house. I wasn't spooked as I really did think it was my mum coming home in the afternoon, but no one was there at all. Years went by and my then boyfriend, now fiance, moved in for a bit. As a heads up, he's had paranormal stuff happen to him previously. He got the middle guest room. The following will be his experiences. One of my ugly dolls was in his room on his bed. He wasn't a fan of it and put it on the floor one day. When he woke up next morning, it was back on the bed next to him. Neither my mum or I moved that doll. That long stretch from the bedroom to the other side of the house, he never liked it. Felt like he was being watched and not by anything good. I'd also like to add that I was always rushed through that hallway at night with lights on if I had to. So we were never fans of that walk. It got better when we adopted three cats who mainly stayed in the family room on the other side. Like they formed a bridge between the two areas. One day he came home from work one morning, 
third shift and noticed the lights behind my mum's bedroom would turn on by themselves. They didn't have any motion or timer. My mum was at work. I have also seen a door that was open later be closed without anyone around, but I didn't witness the act itself. Another thing I heard a few times was the sound of a bouncing ball outside my house. This was years ago, so I can't recall what kind of ball it sounded like, but imagine a kid just bouncing a ball on concrete repeatedly nearby. But it was only in the middle of the night, and there is no hard surface near that corner of the house, just grass and dirt. The driveway is on the whole other side of the house. So the house now has three people. One day, due to work and travel, I was home alone. I was in my room and heard a very distinct knock on my closed door. From the rhythm to the volume, it sounded exactly like how my mum would playfully knock on my door to get my attention. Three lightish knocks in quick succession. I remember being very, very scared about this because whatever it was, was imitating my mum. I did a lot of praying for protection that night. Finally, we arrive at the last incident. If you notice, everything I had experienced had either been something that changed but I didn't witness or something audible. This was my first visual experience. This happened with my mum and dad in the house at night. My fiancé had moved out by then. My dad was in the kitchen cooking for the next day. My mom was in the guest room, and I was in my own room laying on the floor on my stomach on my laptop. My actual computer desk is so full of crap, I chose the floor. I was turned away from the entrance with the door to the right of my feet from my point of view. The door was closed, the lights were on, and in the reflection of my laptop monitor, I saw someone pass from left to right, with the lights behind me, and seeing from the display that's on, I can't say I saw any details, but the lights were interrupted by a figure walking past, like someone was going from the door to my room and passing the lights. The way the reflection looked seemed something out of the ordinary, and I thought it was my mum messing with me. I quickly turned around, but naturally no one was there in the room with me. The door was still shut, and no one could have opened the door, walked back and forth and left that quickly and quietly. I immediately checked on my mum in the room right next to me. I had to eliminate any doubt, even with the unnatural speed, a human wouldn't had time to sneak out. She was on the bed with blankets, a lap desk, a laptop, and busy as a bee, no way my dad could have done anything like that. He's old and not quiet. So that was my second fearful incident. I'm not gonna lie, I did not feel comfortable sleeping in my room for quite a while after that. Just the culmination of all of this was getting freaky for me. We went to a Buddhist temple to get some stuff done. I was planning on moving out soon and didn't want whatever this was following me. So far, so good. Despite my mum having her fair share of ghostly experiences in her home country, when she was a youngster, she never experienced anything in this house. My dad as well. We actually didn't want to tell him any of this as we didn't want to spook him. In summary, I feel like maybe the beginning may have had something to do with the daughter of the original homeowners, although she never lived here and definitely wasn't a little girl when she passed. It's like she was looking for where her parents lived last. I don't know. Maybe she regressed to a more innocent time of her life with her child's voice. As for the rest, I have no idea. I'm just happy that I'm not feeling that fear anymore. This is the first time I share anything like this, but I need to get it off my chest because it's been freaking me out for years and I can't talk to any of my friends about it because they don't believe me. I have a long list of things that have happened to me over the years we've been in the house I currently live in, and I am a 20-year-old college student since the time of this post. The first event I can remember was when I was around five or six. This is shortly after my brother passing away from cancer. I had a babysitter with me who knew me since just after I was able to walk. I don't remember her much after this event, but she was extremely nice. Anyway, 
I walked into the entrance area in my house that has stairs going to the upstairs. This area is connected to the dining room, living room and kitchen. I saw a man walking down the stairs with what seemed like a Civil War attire. When he got to the landing and turned to go down the rest of the stairs, he looked me dead in the eyes and moved his mouth like he was talking, but I couldn't hear him. In response, I turned to call my babysitter, Emma, and I turned back and he was gone. I don't know what to think of that besides an overactive imagination, but I don't think so. Shortly after this event, Emma quit because she got scared. I don't remember saying this, but according to my parents, I said something along the lines of, he doesn't like you, and her, before she almost got into a crash a few days later. The second and third events all happened in a two year time period. I usually have to bring the Christmas decorations back to the basement in mid January. It was a normal day and we just boxed all the Christmas tree ornaments. So I had to go and put them in the corner of the basement where we have random stuff from where my parents first got married to where they first moved into the house after it got built. We put the box down and as I'm still walking back to the stairs, I heard a faint girl's voice whisper something behind me. My hairs stood on end, and I book it up the stairs and start crying. They don't listen to me since I'm only 10 at the time, and a year comes and goes, and I've steeled myself for this moment, again, thinking I just heard the TV that's directly above me. But again, I hear a girl's voice saying something, but this time it was in my ear. The fourth event happens in a very similar way a few years later, since I refused to go to the basement alone. I go down there because I needed to grab something out of the fridge for my dad, and I already didn't want to be down there. Just as I'm leaving, I hear a girl laugh coming from the corner of the basement where the other two events happened, and one of the pipes starts making a similar noise to a teapot boiling. This was the first and only time this ever happened in the house. The fifth event was from when I was around 13 to 14. It was late at night, and I was sleeping and I remember when something opened the door to my room and walked in. It didn't make a sound, except when the door opened, and it was a man in his 60s with a cane that had a strange design on the handle. He didn't seem threatening or anything, and he didn't show any emotion. I must have fallen asleep somewhere in that time, because I had my dad come in yelling that I was going to be late for school. After school, I talked to my mum to pick me up after football and explained it to her describing the man and his cane. She flipped out because that night her father passed away and I had never met this man before in my life. So there's no way for me to know what he looks like or his cane that he had for years. She doesn't even have pictures of her father in the house or anywhere that I would be able to find. This last bit, other than the main events happening, I've heard doors and cupboards open and slam shops over the years, when I've been the only one in the house since my parents usually left for work at 8am and didn't get back until at least 9 or 10. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so very, very much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed tonight's stories. It would of course mean a lot to me if you would subscribe as 74% of you are not currently subscribed. Thank you all. I think all YouTubers are suffering right now. January views, slump. So it'd be great if you could share this video with a friend or several friends or all your friends or everyone you know. Now maybe that is a bit excessive. In any case, I'd appreciate a bit of love right now in terms of sharing. Don't usually ask for it, but right now would be great. A huge thanks as always to my wonderful members and patrons whose names can be seen on the screen. If your name is on here, thank you so much. And if you'd like your name to be on here, follow the link in the description or press the join button to, um, to join. Good stuff happens when you join. Trust me, I've been told great things from other people. But for now, it's time for me to sign off. So stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.